Well, howdy, 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 nearly seen your citizen here. Greetings, boys and girls, and welcome to this, another brand new day. It is 7.43 a.m. on Tuesday, the 20th of November. I was going to say it was the 20th of Thursday, but that didn't make any sense at all. And here is Dr. Snurf, little cookie. He's a sweetheart. I really, really love him a lot. And this is going to be his last day. I'm going to put him next to the wall afterward and tomorrow and then for the next couple days it's going to be little saber little cream that's her other name <laughs> so here we go i'm going to put him back in his cage now because he, he's trying to run away so i i don't blame him i woke him up here we go little guy don't panic don't panic don't panic there you go you're into your nest as stated i woke him straight up so there we go i've covered him up with some bedding and i've pulled the lid back over so it's he's getting himself comfortable and he's irritated so he's getting out and he's gonna walk on his wheel a little bit but other than that he's cool oh it has been a heck of a day it has been a very painful day both mentally and physically physically oy vey well let's start with mentally first I mean this morning I was downstairs and I was already starting to cry because I was reading part of a zombie book and it wasn't the zombie book that made me cry. But it was the person inside of the zombie story was realizing, you know, that with things changing in the world, I'm rereading it. It's a stupid, stupid, stupid story. But still, it's they're fun. But she's realizing her place in the world and she's going, gosh, you know, I can do this. I, I can be a caretaker. And she's going to caretake. She's going to take care of the people that... that she finds and it's like that that's good and it was like I was thinking to myself and remembering I mean I spent Fifteen years as a nurse's aide as a caretaker. I mean that was major 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 part of my life huge I mean I drifted through life wondering what I was gonna do I wanted to be a writer, but my alcoholism was destroying that, and I needed a, a, a job, so I ended up getting a job as a nurse's aide, and then I discovered that that was what I really wanted to do. I was a caretaker. I discovered I'm a caretaker. I take care of people, either physically, when I worked as a nurse's aide, or mentally, as best I can. And when I broke myself and couldn't work as a nurse's aide anymore, that was devastating. But I was able to spend the next, like, 12, 13 years still being a caretaker. Not 13 years, in fact, less than that. Because I was only married to my wife for 12 years, and we spent, like, three of those 12 working together at the same nursing home, so... It was like I spent the next nine years after I hurt myself, there we go, still being a caretaker. I was care taking care of my wife, physically and mentally. I mean, toward the end, I had to, if she had to go to the bathroom, I had to get her into her wheelchair, take her from the wheelchair to the bathroom, help her from the wheelchair to the toilet, and then back, and then, so I was doing as much as I needed to do, and it was a good thing. But since she's been gone and I can't physically do much of anything at all, it's been rough. But was I was crying about again downstairs is I just suddenly it sunk in again. And I've thought about it before, but it, it really did. It was like I'm I'm still a caretaker. I'm still able to caretake. Because I have gotten physical letters from people and comments and emails from people saying that I have I have helped them keep it together so that they're still alive today. Just by showing that if I can do it, that they can do it too. And I'm still a caretaker. And so when it sinks in emotionally, periodically like that, I couldn't even help it. I was crying. Just being able to still be a caretaker is incredibly important to me. It's from 1989 when I became a nurse's aide and discovered that taking care of people was my job. It's what I'm here for. So, 
<laughs> I'm still tearing up now. I don't have any tissues anywhere close. Life is life. Thumbs up for that. Anyway, though, so I was going through that and that nice revelation. So emotionally, I was a bit on the woo side when I started my day. And then I come up here, boot up my machine, start getting everything working. System is looking like it's working fine. My mic has the blue LED light on in the inside of it, which means it's working. All of my software is saying things are working. So I do a sound check and it's absolutely silent. No sound at all. So I'm doing the troubleshooters. I'm checking all of my connections. I'm plugging in, replugging in things very, very carefully because the USB connector on the bottom of my mic is so fatigued, so much metal fatigue that it's shorting out periodically and I gotta be very careful. So I'm trying to figure it out and nothing is working anywhere. Troubleshooters are just going, <laughs> I, I, I don't know. So that was fun and I had to reboot and luckily, hopefully everything's still working now. That'll be good. Another thing that's irritating me on my system is I use a C920 Logitech webcam. That's what this is right here. It has two mics in it. I don't use those because they're far away and they're cheap and I already have the AT2020 USB mic. So I use this. When this thing this morning was not working, I was like, oh great, okay, so let's try the internal mic. My system doesn't recognize any other microphones on my system except this one. Where did the 920, the C920? Uh, nope. My system with the, and I keep having to reinstall the hardware periodically with the software. So I don't know where the mic went or why. Still, this thing is at least working. I, I don't know why I rebooted and everything was like, hey, okay. Oh yeah. And the other painful part of the day, because this is both funny and really irritating. Not the first part, the first part's just painful. Oh boy. My sleep mask, because I have sleep apnea, my sleep mask, which forces air down my throat to keep me breathing when I stop breathing, because I have central apnea. There's central apnea and obstructive apnea. Obstructive apnea is when the soft tissues of your throat collapse and physically block off your airway. I have central apnea. Central apnea is where your brain literally forgets to tell your lungs to breathe. And so you've got a fine airway. It's just to go and stop. And it can be up to a minute later before you start breathing again. Your brain suddenly goes, hey, hey, oh, oh, that's why. Here, breathe, breathe. <sighs> and it's a tremendous strain on your heart, a tremendous strain on your brain. You can eventually have heart attack or stroke from it because it's accumulative damage. It causes slow accumulate. It's just another straw on the camel's back. Sure, when you're just starting, yeah, it's a strong camel. And that's just one or two pieces of straw. But toward the end, when that camel's almost buried in that last piece of straw, it just goes wonk. So my sleep mask forced a ton of air down my, into my gut last night. Because even while I'm awake, I will have to burp air out of my stomach because my epiglottis back here relaxes. And so when it's forcing air down into my lungs, it's also forcing air into my stomach. And because of that, oh boy, when the air is working its way through my small intestinal tract, it is like a butcher knife in my gut. Sometimes two or three. Oh, I was bent over hard this morning trying to get stuff done in here. So it was fun and exciting. And what was even more fun and exciting is I have showed this before and I'm going to show it again. This is my fried egg dab stick. When I take THC oil dabs, I use this. Now I store all my equipment for cannabis and THC oil consumption in the house because I'm not going to put it outside. It's going to get covered in dirt and leaves and it's disgusting. So you keep it inside. You take it outside if you're going to use it. That's fine. So I've got my dab stick out here. 
and I accidentally touched it in such a way that it went flying. Bounced between my desk and the other table that I have off just to the side where I keep my PS4. Underneath that table, I have a little plastic chest of drawer thing, like Rubbermaid. You just open it up and it runs on cheap tracks. They're awful, they're horrible, but they work, and so they're nice that way. The bottommost one, well, all of you just slide them in and out, the drawers, and so there's a tiny bit of space between the drawers on the tracks. This thing went kerping, 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 and then fell right in exactly perfectly without even hitting the sides and then was thunked this far down below in a place I couldn't put my fingers. It's not magnetic, so I couldn't use the magnet to get it out. My bottommost drawer has a hassle to move, so I'm fighting to get that thing out of there. Finally, hurting my arm and my hands because it's either fight with it and hurt myself and get it done in five minutes or just take apart the entire area, take a half hour and then put everything back together again. So I just hurt myself and finally got this thing out of the track. Ugh. It's been a wonderful day. And lately, I do not know why, but my webcam is just, it used to like record at a fairly good frame rate, but now when I watch it, when I'm recording, you know, usually there's a nice flow. It'll be motion blur for my hands, but so much now when I'm recording, I'll see the like 23 frames as it's recording. It's not a whoosh. It is a cha 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 and it's like, oh my God, if I can see it on the webcam, what is it recording like? Thumbs up for that. Yeah, so it's been a, a heck of a day. It's been a heck of a day. My kitty cat has been running in inside, running in inside. That's not exactly language. She's been running in inside. I did it again. In and out of the house through the window. And it's good. She's a happy kitty. She jumps up onto the hamster cage over there. I don't know why she stopped going into that little cubby space. As soon as I talked about the little cubby space that she's been hiding in back there, she stopped hiding back there. Now she sits on top of Saber's hamster cage and sleeps on top of that. Which is fine. I've got that extra plastic bin lid up on top of it so that unless she gets really crazy and knocks that down, it's not gonna knock the lid down inside. She does occasionally when she jumps from the window down, go thump, boom, and knock everything down and inside. So gotta keep my eyes open. And I've talked about this before. Amelia is such a good cat. She is an amazing cat. When I lived over at my brother-in-law's house, I lived in there, lived. I was still sleeping across the, well, I wasn't even sleeping at that point because my anxiety was so bad but I was inside of their dining room set up there so that I was basically living there and then sleeping, not sleeping, just sleeping over in my recliner in the house that hadn't been taken illegally by Wells Fargo yet. While I was doing that, I had my hamster cages on the dining tables and such. And she would actually, I would find her sleeping inside of some of the hamster cages, just curled up on the bedding, and she never touched the hamsters. The hamsters would be sleeping in the hamster cage, she would be sleeping in the hamster cage, and everything was fine. She never, ever, ever touched them. She knew my pets don't touch. And so when we were here, I just had the hamsters, and then one day she showed up. So it wasn't even long, it was less than a week after we had moved. She showed up on my doorstep, because she was my brother-in-law's cat, but she adopted me. So when I moved, I moved, and but she tracked me down and so now she's here. But while here, a couple times, like one time especially, she was out in the hall toward the beginning of my time. And I had one hamster that kept getting out of the cage just every day, like three times. The last time I caught him, he was actually playing with her tail. So she is sitting at the end of the hall, just curled up and watching, flicking her tail periodically. And little Don Draper, that was his name, the little hamster was just there and playing with her tail. 
And so I picked him up and put him back in his cage again. <laughs> so she is a really, really, really good cat that way. She knows which animals to kill and which not, because she's hell on animals outside. I mean, she's she kills and eats everything out there. Birds, rats, shrews. She's murder on the local wildlife. But she knows you don't touch hamsters. Very good. Oh my gosh, 15 minutes. I've opened up 24 hours worth of comments in my community tab, and I'm going to go through and thank 20 to 25 people. I do this for many reasons. Number one, I'm incredibly appreciative of everyone that leaves a comment. Number two, I'm incredibly appreciative of everyone that leaves a comment. So, thumbs up and thank you. If I mispronounce a username, no disrespect is intended. I'm an American English speaker. I am not reading the comments right now. I'm going to read as many as I can afterward. Thumbs up as many as I can. Answer as many as I can. So, thumbs up and thank you very, very much. <clears throat> so no disrespect I'm not reading them and it's a range of 20 to 25 because with my depression and fibromyalgia and even though I count an American sign language on the fingers of this hand <sighs> so calling up my chrome I hope we have Rivers Allen thank you very very much aggressive pizza I like that name thank you very very much love crafty and greatly appreciated Jen the master thumbs up and thank you and Bella Lipson greatly appreciated chef j blue coming to yeah i appreciate seeing your name in the comments as well so thomas s you're one as well that i've come to appreciate and see and kathy kids cat you are another that i look forward to seeing in the comments every day thank you very very much jason heatherly thank you very very much aleandra del Valle. I bet I'm nowhere close, but thank you very much. And Pandora NYC1, thank you very, very much. Saw Mad, thumbs up and thank you. Squid Shock, I like the name, thank you. And Kenneth Romo, thank you very, very much. Plerto, P L R T O, it looks like, I hope, thank you very, very much. Lane Ferguson, thank you very, very much. Trippy Sucks, really appreciated. James Bond, thank you very, very much. And High Riser, except all of the vowels or digits so al harrington thank you very very much alexander hashimola hassani oh boy i'm nowhere close but thank you very very much and the the d games d159 i sure hope i'm close on that one and brian glenn always good to see you in the comments thumbs up and thank you paladin walliam you're another name i have come to look forward to thank you and Ma michelle thank you another name that I appreciate seeing in the comments. Thumbs up and thank you. Each and every one of you is stated. You get me out of this head, into the world, dealing with actual people, and that's a good thing. I mean, I could be just a brain in a jar. Any one of us could be just a brain in a jar, and we're just hallucinating all this to keep from going mad from lack of sensory input. It's always possible. We'd never know. So, but... Uh, I think there are other people, and like Rene Descartes said, you know, I think, therefore I am, and that is the basis that you go from. I know, I am a jack of all trades, you know, master of none. I know a little bit about a lot. If you could check out my various links, I have Twitter, Facebook, GoFundMe, Patreon.com. If you could donate to my GoFundMe campaign or become a Patreon.com patron like one of these beautiful and awesome people, that would be beautiful and awesome. I put out a cry for help on Twitter last night. I have had a couple donations for GoFundMe and I think one or two new Patreon.com patrons. Thank you all so very, very much. I really don't want to be homeless next month and any amount helps. Thumbs up and thank you. Now, if you cannot donate or you simply do not donate, I do take all good wishes and I deposit them in the bank of my heart where I draw interest and I am serious about that. I am quite honest. I do. So thank you. And if you could toss me a like, that would be very cool. I do appreciate that as well. And of course, YouTube runs on engagement. So if you could smash that like button and be sure to hit that bell. And of course, if you could subscribe to the channel, that would be very, very cool. Greatly appreciated. I will do my best to keep you entertained from now to the end of time if you do so. And even if you don't, I mean, even if you don't subscribe, but just watch, that's cool too. Hopefully I'm gonna have a reaction video today. Hopefully I'm gonna have a game video. Hopefully a game video from a game channel. I want to live stream again. I keep falling asleep. I'm doing better yesterday and hopefully today, but not yet. So you take care. Have a great day today. I will see you on the flip side, my friend. And that is a very good thing. 
Quite seriously and honestly, it is. It's good to be alive. I enjoy metabolizing. 